What up, though? What up, though, y'all? I'm gonna let a couple people get in here, then we're gonna crank it up. What up, though? What up, though? What up, though? What the feezy? What's happening? Hey, Alan, I'm about to make you a moderator, brother. I've been meaning to do that, my bad. Hey, Alan, check me up. Anybody pay attention to the comments? I just made you a moderator, Adam. Alan, anybody go to saying anything goofy, trolling me like they were doing yesterday? Cut it out. I'm about to tell the story. I ain't really got time to just be reading all the comments, you know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I need one more mod. Who want to be the mod before we get started? I need one more moderator. It got to be somebody that I know been here for a while. Yep, right there. Delinda Garrison, I've been seeing you for a long time. New moderator. Anybody say anything goofy in my chat? Anybody try to argue with anybody? Anybody say any type of foolery? Get them up out of here. Get them up out of here. Big shout out to all y'all. Now, that's a lot of new people I've been seeing popping up on the thing. My name is Bill, and uh, I just did nine years in prison. I've been out for seven months now, and I pretty much tell my story and experiences uh, with hopes of motivating somebody to make better decisions and not go down that path. Now, I'm about to tell y'all about the scariest thing that ever happened to me in prison. I made a very, very slight video on this when I first started my channel. I, it was like a two minute video and I just, you know, told you what happened, but I didn't go into depth, you know, like y'all really like your boy to do. So I'm about to break it down and go all into it. Attention again to my moderators. It's been some foolery on here lately. Somebody's trolling me. So if you see anything goofy, kick them. Cause I ain't got time to be reading every single comment. Anybody say anything goofy, kick them. I don't, I don't give a damn what it is. They say anything, get them up out of here. Yo, talking about the time, dude, was in your face. Yeah, yeah, easy nine, too. Nah, uh, Delanda, he ain't saying nothing wrong. Easy nine, too. <clears throat> All right, so. I made a video about it. So I transferred from, uh, I transferred from Archery State Prison, which is a medium security prison. I transferred from Archery State Prison, which is a medium security, no, I transferred from, yeah, Archery State Prison, which is a medium security, to Valdosta State Prison. Valdosta is a, Close security prison. That's what whenever you hear people, people in Georgia be saying, oh, level five, I was at a level five. That's the type of prison Valdosta is. It's a level five, it's a high security prison. And you know, it, it's just a little wicked. It get real wicked in them level five. Y'all tap that like button for your boy real quick. So I get to Valdosta State Prison, so they take me to my dorm. Now let me, let me tell you this before we even go into that. Let me tell you this. No, I'll say that for another video. So I go to my dorm, and as soon as I walk in the door, everybody at the door. What's up, what's up, what's up? So as soon as I come in with my property, everybody go to scream, what you is, bro, what you is, what you is? You know, the gang stuff. Don't nobody give a damn about your name. What's up, bro, are you okay? Don't nobody care about none of that. Only thing they care about what gang are you affiliated with. So I told them, you know what I told them, they pointed me in the direction of where them guys was at. I go down to my room. My roommate is a guy named Tug, like, like Tug of War. He seemed cool. Uh, I think he was from, um, I think Tug, he was from somewhere like uh, Tifton, Georgia or something. Skinny, uh, brown skinned dude, nappy little hair, probably about two, three inches taller than me. Uh, I think he was like 40 or something like that. He seemed cool as hell though. I go in the room with Tug. We sitting in there, you know, kicking it, chopping it up and telling them where I'm from and stuff. 
one of the first questions he asked me was, do I got a tablet? Now, when I transferred to this prison, this was the ending of 2018. 2016, the prison had just passed out these tablets where you can listen to music on, you can email your family on, all that type of stuff. So he like, you got a tablet? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, a tablet? I'm saying, ain't nothing wrong with you asking me to use somebody's tablet, but I just moved in here. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even trying to figure out what you need to be figuring out about a roommate before you go to talk about a damn tablet. So what I noticed was he was a real nasty individual. I just noticed things around the room, sink dirty, toilet dirty, uh, you know, so I'm talking to him about that. I'm like, folks, we're going to have to do something about this because I'm not going to be in no room the sink dirty, the toilet dirty, the, the, you got clothes and stuff everywhere all over the floor. So he tells me, oh, no, nah, I just moved in here yesterday. He tell me, I just moved in here yesterday, and I haven't had time to clean it up and get everything right. So I'm like, all right, cool, I understand that, because I've been in situations like that before. So I think I'm roommates with this dude, so he take me upstairs to meet this other brother named Cheese. Cheese is from um, Madison, Georgia. Cheese was cool as a fan. So he take me up here to meet Cheese. So I meet Cheese. We get real cool, whatever the case. So probably a couple days later, we walk into breakfast. Well, we're walking to breakfast early in the morning. You know, you got people walking with the groups by their gangs. You know, so you got the Bloods here, GDs here, Crips here. You know what I'm saying? So we walking. My, my bunk mate tell me, he like, yeah, I don't know what these such and such members got going on but we could pop out here i don't give a damn we could pop y'all tap that like button he like we could pop i'm like what is you talking about now i go to looking around i'm already on point but i pay attention to any and everything <clears throat> ain't nobody did nothing ain't nobody said nothing crazy to us ain't nobody been looking at us strange ain't nothing strange been going on so now i'm thinking maybe it's something that i'm not seeing I done messed around and overlooked something. So now I'm like, what is you talking about? So he like, man, them folks over there. So now they're looking over here because you just said what you said. So I'm like, bro, what the hell is you talking about, bro? So now we got to be on point because they really over here looking at us. And when we got back to the dorm and I had to talk with all my guys, they're like, nah, ain't nothing, ain't nothing going on. Them folks ain't saying nothing, did nothing, looked at nobody or nothing like that. So that was strike. That was number one when I was starting to realize bro might have not had it all. Second thing, I come in the room one day, he's in the room and he's doing just like this, he's walking back and forth, real and not even a long pace, just like this. And he told me, they got me duck. They got me duck, wrong with them. So I, I reached for the candy bar, it's in my pocket. Just to make sure ain't nothing just happened. Somebody about to come in here and run behind me. I'm like, folks, what is you talking about? He like, nah, they got me. Look, they been trying me. I'm like, who? Who been trying you, bro? He like, man, I don't even want to talk, bro. I don't even want to talk about it. So I leave out my room. I go up there in the room with Cheese. I say, hey, Cheese. He like, what's up? I'm like, what's wrong with Tug? He like, what you mean? I say, bro is down there pasting back and forth, talking about they got him messed up. They got him messed up. They just tried him but I'm trying to ask him who, and he's not telling me nothing. Tug tell me, Tug tell, uh, Cheese tell me, he say, listen, bro, I'm going to keep it real with you, Bill. Uh, I ain't told you this before, you know, because it is what it is, but I'm going to just keep it real with you today. Hey, listen, do me a favor. We got 242 people in here with only 86 likes. I'm about to go grab me another bottle of water real quick. I'm going to give y'all a few seconds. Bro, tap that like button for your boy. So Cheese tell me, he say, listen, Bill. I'm going to keep it real with you, bro. Ain't nobody never said nothing before because, you know, at the end of the day, that's still the brother. We still, you know, we still got love for him. We still going to slide with him if it uh, get crazy or whatever he said. But 
folks be real life tripping like, you know he take mental health medication. I'm like, oh man, they done put me in the damn room with, with uh, can't get right or something. So I'm like, what you mean? He be tripping. He was like, bro, before you moved in this dorm, he said, bro, I came out the room one day. He had a, he had a rope and he had the rope tied from his ankle all the way up to his knee. But it was real hard, bro. It was so hard. You could tell, like, it was cutting off his circulation. Like, he was down there finna pass out. And when we asked him why did he do that, why did he have a thing tied up around his leg, he told us because he can feel what? Oh, yeah, okay. My bad. He said we can, he can feel the snakes crawling from, crawling from the bottom of his feet. Slithering up in his leg, so he tied that string to cut him off at the knee, so they can't come no past his knee. So I said, "You lying?" He said, "I'm dead serious." It was another brother in the dorm. They used to call him B uh, Billy G. I go down to the Billy G room. I'm like, "Hey, bro." He like, "What's up?" I'm like, "You heard about something with Tug had a rope or something tied up around his leg? Talking about he had some damn snakes in his body." Billy G busts out laughing. He said, "Yeah, man, he was tripping." I'm like, "What?" The feasy, so y'all got y'all think it's okay to have me here. You don't think that's something you tell me on the very first day when I first get in here. You don't think that's something you tell me. So they're like, nah, he, don't, he ain't gonna hurt a fly, he ain't gonna hurt a fly, he don't mean no harm or whatever. Uh, one of my moderators, yeah, oh, y'all on point. Let me just kick them off the whole channel, anyway. So, uh, I'm like, damn, bro, that's something you supposed to tell me, ain't it? That ain't nothing you just. Let go on, so now I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, I need to move out the room, buddy. But like I, at this time, the way they got their structure together is like uh, whatever group that you're, you know, affiliated with, I see you, Alan, big shout out to Alan Stokes. Whatever group that you're affiliated with, they want you to be, uh, in the room with them. They want you to be roommates with them. They don't want you being in the room with nobody that's not with what you are. So all of the rooms that was available for me, to, all the rooms that had one bed open, is either there was another group, <clears throat> or there was a civilian, or there was a hen. Y'all know what a hen is, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, damn, ain't no way. So one day we going out to breakfast, Tug out there doing all kind of mental health stuff, making all kind of loud statements, talking about uh, he about to go do this, he about to go do that to somebody. One of the supervisors, the officers see him and end up telling him, come here. So he go trying to run, so they go to chasing him. Tug got caught with the candy bar and he went to the hole. But when I say, I was so happy. Hey listen, I don't want to sound like no hater or nothing. I ain't never hated on nobody. I ain't never wanted to see nobody go to the hole or nothing like that. When that dude went to the hole, I was so happy because I knew for a fact I did not have to deal with the, with the, with the issues no more. Man, I was so happy. This dude was going to the hole. I had to ruin it myself probably about four days. Big shout out to Chill Wheel. It's straight, bro. You good? My bad, I had to put that water back over there. I ain't got no table in here right now. So I had to, uh, I had to run to myself about four days, bro. So on that day, the fourth day, they was moving people from the hole into the dorm. So they brought a dude to my door. He was of an opposite group of what I was. And as soon as I came to the door, he stank, bro. I'm talking about real bad. When you look at him, you know, we wear all white clothes in the Georgia prison. His clothes got all type of stains on it. His pants got little brown, little scuff stains in it and stuff like that. So off the dribble, I'm like, nah, you're not coming in here. So I told the officer, I'm not taking no roommate. She go to tell me, you're going to go to the hole if you don't take a roommate. I'm still bucking because I know this prison don't really care about nothing. Next time, you know, I see Tug running this way. So he like, oh, hell no, nah, that's my room. That's my room right there. That's my brother. I'm going in the room with my brother. So when I seen him, I didn't want to take him in the room again. But uh, I take Tug over this dude right here. So I told the officer, I'm like, no, nah, he could come in here, but bro ain't coming in here. 
So she told bro, all right, come down here. The room they was about to put Tug in, they put him in. We're locked down because a big stabbing just happened between the Bloods and the GFs. Big stabbing. So we're locked down. Tug come back in the room. This man is in the room for probably about three days. And I heard, the first time I heard him talking to himself, I didn't think much of it because sometimes I will express my thoughts out loud and it may appear as if I'm talking to myself. So I felt as if, you know, that's probably what he was doing. I'm on the top bunk, he's on the bottom bunk. I had the headphones in my ear. I was listening to, uh, I don't remember what I was listening to. But you can hear talking over the noise in the headphone. Y'all tap that like button for your boy, appreciate it. You can hear noise outside the headphones. So I'm assuming that he's saying something to me. I take one of the headphones out my ear, and before I could say, uh, what you say, bro, right when I was getting ready to say it, he said, got me effed up. I don't care about none of that. One thing about it, I'm going to get justice for my wife and my daughter. So I'm like, huh? But I don't say nothing. That's what I'm thinking in my head. Like, what? You're going to get justice for your wife and your daughter. Bill, I turn the fees. <laughs> Late fee. Appreciate that, brother. Appreciate you, Chill Will, for that super chat. Uh, supporting the channel. So I'm, I'm thinking in my head, you say you're going to get justice for your wife and your daughter. Now, I don't ever, you know, as long as I've been in this room, as long as when he was my roommate at first when we was talking, I don't never recall him saying nothing about no wife and no daughter. You know what I'm saying? So I just put the headphone back in my ear. I'm like, all right, whatever. But at that very moment, I was like, damn, we need to hurry up and come off lockdown because I need to get out of the damn room with Buddy because he's, he's starting to make me paranoid now. And when you, you know, you one of my guys, I don't ever want to feel paranoid about you. I don't ever want to feel like I got to watch you or I got to keep the candy bar on me about you. You know what I'm saying? Or a certain, stuff, certain type of stuff like that. So the next day, the tax squad comes. The tax squad is the people that gang up from all prisons and they come shake down one prison trying to find all contraband. So the, after the tax squad stripped me and telling me to come outside the room. Now, before they came, we hid our candy bars, right? I put mine in a certain area. My roommate put his in a certain area. His was down low, mine was up high. When the tax squad pulling me out the room like this, I see my bunk mate. Well, I don't see him, I hear him. Like, you know how it sound when metal slide across the floor. I hear some metal slide across the floor. So I'm like, what the hell? What, what do you got going on? I know he ain't finna try to bust the tax squad or nothing like that. The man done used his feet to pull the candy bar from the spot to leave it right there on the floor. So the tax squad will find him. So I'm like, what the hell he got going? So they find him. Then they go to, they charge him. They was talking smack for a minute. They charged him with it because they seen Dumbo do it. They seen him do it. So once it's all said and done, we sitting down on the bed. I said, bro, he like, what's up? I'm like, the tax squad got your candy bar? He said, hell yeah. I'm like, bro, why the hell did you pull it out? One second. The cash app is JSXD2112. Can one of my moderators post that for me, please? Because I can't type while I'm live. It's JSXD. Thank you, Key Israel. Thank you. Let me sip this water one time. And I appreciate everybody who's trying to donate to your boy. So I'm like, bro, why would you take the candy bar out of the spot it was in when you know the police right here? He tell me, oh, I ain't mean to do it. I just kind of stumbled over. How the hell you stumbled over? What did you stumble over? You're standing here just like this with your hand behind your back. The candy bar is over there in front of you behind something. 
how the hell you just stumble over there so your leg just stumbled and just did like that? It don't work like that. Appreciate that, chill with. If you ain't subscribed to your boy, go on, click that button. Appreciate that super chat, chill with. So, he like, yeah, man, I ain't studying it. I ain't worried about it, bro. This is when I knew it was about to be an issue. You know, we tired. We got to clean this whole room up. The room messed up. We got to clean the whole room up. So, you know, by the time we get done, we tired. And it's hot as hell, but it's May. It's summertime in what's, what, what city is Smith State Prison in? It's summertime in Glenville, Georgia. It is super hot, bro. So we tired of hell. I'm out there laying in the bed in my boxers. I'm talking about I'm hot as hell. I ain't got no shirt, no socks, no nothing. So I'm laying there. I hear, you know, the little talking thing again. I take one of the earphones out. I swear to God, this man said, yeah, bro, it's all good. I ain't tripping. But the only reason I got rid of it, I knew the folks was going to see it if I did what I did, but I had to do it because I ain't want to have to do it to my bump. I mean, you know what I'm saying, bro. I ain't want to have to do it to bro. What? So I pulled the other one out of my ear. Now I'm, he got my full attention now. You ain't want to have to do it to your bunk mate. What you mean do it to your bunk mate? Now, for those of you who don't know, if somebody say in prison, I didn't want to have to do it to him, or I'm about to do it to him, that means hurting somebody very bad with a weapon. That's what I'm about to do it to him means. You about to really hurt somebody. So now the dude, dude buddy got me paranoid as hell now. He got me paranoid as hell. Now, now I'm like, damn, you ain't want to have to do it to your bump, mate. I don't know who the hell you down there talking to, but <laughs> hey, but hey. So I, don't, I still don't say nothing. Cheese already told me, dude, you know, he be having some issues going on or whatever. So now every single day when the warden come through for inspection, I say, what? Man, when y'all gonna let us off lockdown, bro? When y'all gonna let us off lockdown, bro? So, he like, uh, y'all gonna come up? Y'all gonna come up? We gonna let y'all up? Now, I'm trying to find out why the hell we ain't came off lockdown because I'm trying to get out the room with Buddy. I really, you know, I, I'm rocking with Buddy, but I also know I end up doing something to Buddy if it, if, you know, I don't want to have to, but I know I, I will, you know what I'm saying? And he's saying crazy stuff now. DeAndre Ellison, I appreciate that. $20 family. I can't check it right now because I'm using my phone to record, but I'm, uh, I got it. You sent it. I got it. I appreciate you for supporting the channel, good brother. Um, so I'm like, uh, damn, bro, I don't want to have to do nothing to do. So I'll probably give it, I'll probably give it about another two days. Now, one thing I used to always like to do when certain officers used to work I used to like to go to the window, our little small window, and look at them. Lundy Dixon, appreciate you for joining the membership family. I used to like to go to the window to look at them because I'm around all dudes. So I get to see a female while we're locked down. It's cool. So I go to the window all the time. We used to both do it, bro. We, I'll go look right here. He might stand up whenever it's a new female. So it was a female working. I just get up, look at her whenever she come by and count. Hey, I talk to her, speak to her, whatever. So I get up to go look at her this particular day. My roommate say, while I'm at the window like this, my roommate say, man, that's some old weird creep type of shit. I'm like, what? He like, you just standing, you just standing in the window, looking out the window. And when I look over at him, bro, I think what, what, what took me left field his facial expressions, bro. Sometimes it's not about what a person says, it's about how they say it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you, you could owe me some money, I could be like, hey, bro, you got that $5 you owe me? Or I could be like, hey, bro, you got that $5 you owe me? You know what I'm saying? It's a total difference. I look over at the man, the man say, man, that's some creepy. I ain't with all that, that's some real weird. So I'm like, what is you talking about? He talking about the officer. I'm like, how, what is you talking about? What's creepy, what's a weird? The man say, you going in the window, come on, bro. You in the window, looking through a little small window at a female. Bro, you, you starting to get me, like, 
some crazy type of vibes. I'm like, what? What is you talking about? I'm in here around you all day. So if an officer comes in, a nice looking female, and she comes in and she's standing in the middle of the floor, it's giving you creep type of vibes for me to go look through the window and look at it. Yeah, but why you sitting there? Like, why do you want to stare at and watch an officer? Like, bro, that's just crazy to me. In my mind, I know for a fact I'm going to end up beating tug ass because it started a little and it's building up. And then you just made a comment the other day talking about you got rid of the candy bar because you ain't want to have to do it to your roommate. So now I'm like, oh, no, 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 we ain't doing that. Y'all tap the like button for your boy if you just coming in here and you ain't did it yet. We got 500 people, 240 likes. Y'all just hit that like button for your boy real quick. So I stay at the window. I keep looking. I'm not stunned with buddy talking about. So, you know, they come by, count, they go on by their business. I get up there on my bed. I'm doing me. This is why I said, out of all the things I have ever been through in prison, out of all the violence that I have seen, the ones I have participated in, for me personally, this is the scariest moment of my life that ever happened to me in prison. I was asleep. I felt like wind or something on my face. Hold on, before I get to that, let me tell y'all this. Before I went to sleep, I put my candy bar up in the spot. I always put it up in the spot simply because we're on lockdown. I don't got to worry about nobody running in the room on me the next morning because we're locked down already. A lot of people been commenting saying, what is a candy bar? A candy bar is a, you know, I just don't like to say it. So I put it up in the spot. I go to sleep. I don't know why I did that. Just based off that comment he made, I shouldn't have never did that. When I woke up, I was asleep. I felt wind. My fan was broke. But it had just went out that day. My bump mate had been trying to work on it. So I'm slightly, I'm dreaming, but I'm wondering, like, damn, that's probably the fan blowing on me or something. And it's like, as I come to consciousness more and more, it don't feel like a fan wind. It just feels like, like something being blown on you or something. I open my eyes, bro. I always sleep on my back. Since I've been in prison, I can't sleep on my side. I can't sleep on my stomach. I always sleep on my back. And I think that's just a just something by because of something that happened to somebody before. You know, so I always sleep on my back. I promise you, bro, I'm laying on my back at Valdosta State Prison. 2000, either late 18 or early 19. I'm laying down on my back. I open my eyes. When I open my eyes, I seem like, figure this close in my face and it was wind blowing. So I hurry up and turn and look like this. It was my roommate standing there. The, the wind, the wind that I was feeling was my roommate in my face while I'm asleep doing this. Bro, when I say I jumped up so fast, bro, I'm laying down like that. When I noticed what was going on, I'm on the top bunk. I jump up so fast. Now I'm sitting straight up. I'm like, Tug, what the hell is you doing, bro? You know, I wiped my face off. It's spit that was popping out the man's mouth. I'm like, Tug, what the hell is you doing, bro? What is you, what is you blowing all on my face for, folks? I look down at Tug, bro. The candy bar that I had, it was something called a gold rod. I don't know if that's a chain game term or what. It's about this long. It's about that thick. And the end of it is pencil sharp. When I say pencil sharp, I mean you can barely do this. Your fingertip will start bleeding. I promise you. It don't got no ridges or nothing in it. It's smooth. So that means... You can hit somebody and it'll go far as the pressure in your arm do. It'll just keep going. I looked down. The man was holding it in his hand. 
The reason I say this was the scariest thing that ever happened to me in my life while I was in the prison, what if I wouldn't have woke up? What if he would have said, you know what? And just stabbed me in the neck while I was asleep. I wouldn't be here today in front of no camera talking to y'all. All praise to the Most High for getting me out of that situation. The man got the candy bar in his hand. I'm like, Tug, what the f you doing, bro? What you got my tool in your life? What you got going on? This man, exact words where he stepped back a little bit from me. He looked straight up at me. Now, there's a, a, a word that we should all know what it is. It starts with the R. I'm not going to say it. And basically, it means somebody got taken advantage of in a very bad manner. So when I say taken advantage of, I'm really saying the R word. The man looked up at me and he said, you took advantage of my daughter and you killed my wife. You ain't think I was gonna never catch up to you, huh, Daryl Dobson? So I'm like, what? What, is you crazy? You done lost your damn mind? So he said again, but now he starts taking steps He's staring at me, but now he's pacing like back and forth. I'm still sitting on the top bunk. He said, you took advantage of my daughter and you killed my wife. Look at me straight in my eyes, bro. It ain't no smiling, no grinning, no nothing. He like, bro, I promise you, Daryl Dobson, Daryl Dobson, I finally caught up with you. So now me being the type of person I am, me thinking the way I think, I'm trying to think of a way that I can, uh, because I believe in mind manipulates the map. No matter what it is, no matter where I'm at, I believe your mind can manipulate any matter. So me thinking like that, I go to thinking, how can I use my mind to manipulate this matter? So I say, play it cool. You know something ain't right with them? Play it cool. So I'm like, Tug. You know I'm your brother, right? You do know I'm your brother. You do know my name ain't no damn Daryl Dobson. My name is Bill. So he like, nah, your name ain't Bill. Your name Daryl Dobson. I know what you look like. I finally caught up with you. You took advantage of my daughter. You did that to my wife. I got to get revenge for my daughter and my wife. Bro, I can't believe. Hold on, y'all. Oh, okay, I thought they said something else crazy. I appreciate y'all. If y'all ain't tapped that like button, go ahead and tap it for your boy one time. Let's at least get about 450. We got almost 700 people in here. Let's at least get about 400, 500 likes. It just helps expand this live that I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm talking to him now. Now I'm like, bro, you know I'm your brother. He like, nah, you know he ain't going for it, but he ain't started swinging the candy bar yet neither. So I feel like, you know, I'm doing something right here. So I go to using the gang stuff, the gang lingo to my advantage. So I'm just hitting them with little bits and pieces. So he like, so you my brother for real. That's when I knew I was finna get to him. So I'm like, yeah, bro, you tripping, bro. So he like, nah, you ain't my brother. You ain't my brother. He walked over this way to the door. He turned around with the candy bar in his hand. The man looked at me and said, Dale Dobson, if you got any prayers or anything you need to get out the way, if you need to talk to your God, uh, you need to go on and do it. Because this is going to be the last few minutes you got. When he said that, bro, my heart went to beating so fast, bro. I started to almost panic. I felt sweat beads all on my head because I'm thinking like, this dude got, a, I don't think he got a life sentence, but he had a whole bunch of time. At this point, I had like maybe four years left to go. So I'm thinking like, damn, this dude is clearly tripping. What if he, I'm like, this dude is clearly tripping. What if he real life do what he's saying and take my life for real? So I'm like, damn, I got to respond and I got to do it fast, bro. You got to make a decision and it got to be fast. This man sitting here telling me 
whoever your God is, you better go and pray to him because this this finna be this finna be it. This the last one. Whoever you pray to, go ahead and get it out the way real quick. So I kind of slightly glance around the room, bro. I ain't got on no damn shoes, so ain't no friction on my feet. I got on my boxers. I ain't got on no t-shirt, no nothing. After he say that to me, he's still looking at me, but the flaps that we used to use to keep over the window from the officer from looking in whenever we got like phone or something or we got, we smoking, we'll put the flap up. It's two pieces of paper cut out. The flap is on top of my locker box. So while he's looking at me, he done grab one of the flaps and he'll put it in the window, he'll hurry up, keep looking back. So when he reach and grab the second flap, I say, bro, you got to do something. So when he hurry up and look over to the right to put the flap in the window, I hurry up and jump off the bed. When I jump off the bed, he had the flap in there. I hurry up and jump off the bed. He turn around real quick. He got the candy by like this. He like, get back on the bed, I'm a kid. Well, get back on the bed, I'm a kid. So I'm looking, I'm like, hell no. Nah. Now, I used to keep my blankets folded up all the time. Even when I'm in the bed sleep, I just don't like a messy looking bed. So I used to have it folded up the long way. So it's still neat, but you know, it's gonna stretch out and cover me up still. I grab my blanket with my left hand. I grab my fan with my right hand. I snatched, I snatched the fan like this because it was plugged up. I was praying it come back on one day because it had just broke. I snatched the fan out the wall. So now I got a fan about you know, a round fan, probably about like that big. I got the fan in my right hand. I got the blanket in my left hand. I'm thinking, throw the blanket on him. That should kind of give you a little leeway. If he swing it and hit the blanket, then you just go beat him with the fan. As I'm walking, I'm like, I'm like this. I got the blanket, like going down my arm. I got the fan. Like I'm like, bro, you tripping, bro? Bro, you tripping? Bro? I say, like, man, get back on the bed, on the key. Get back on the bed, on the key. I'm like, no, nah, we ain't doing none of that. I'm like, man, so I go to take them like little steps towards him. Once I probably took about three or four steps towards the dude, brother, he charged at me, bro. He went to swing in the candy bar. I kind of threw the blanket up thinking it's going to block him. He ended up like when he hit it like that, the blanket fell straight all the way down my arm. This is how I know my life got to be destined for greatness. This is how I know it's a reason I'm still here telling these stories, bro. I promise you, the man went to swing in the candy bar fast. He just swinging it all kind of ways. The only damn thing I got in my hand is a little fan. I go to swing in the fan. I'm swinging the fan. This man never stabbed me, not one time, bro. That's why I give praise to the Most High every single day. This man never stabbed me, not one time. And he got something that's real, real official. I ended up dropping the fan by accident. When I did that, the only thing I could do is grab dude. So I done grabbed him. So now I got his hand where the candy bar at. I got my wrist. I got my, my hand wrapped around his wrist like this. So now me and this dude in the room, like wrestling and stuff like that. He telling me he about to kill me. He know I did this to his family, all this type of stuff. So we sitting here wrestling. So now it done got calm. We ain't wrestling no more. So I'm like, bro, you is tripping, bro. Put the candy bar down. What is you doing, bro? So he's like, no, I know who you is. I know who you is. So now I'm just sitting here holding him, bro. I'm like, I'm, I'm not about to let you go. You're not about to do nothing to me. The dude named Billy G, this is the most strange thing in the world, bro. He walks up to the window. Now, my first question is, how the hell you get out the room? How did you get out your room, bro? How? How did you get out your room? He walks down here to the door. He's standing at the window. I got bro like this. He like, man, what though? Man, what y'all got going on in there, bro? Y'all folks tripping. So I'm like, bro, now Billy G got all the pool. At this prison, he ran the show. He was the head man. I mean, like far as what we were, he was the head man. I'm like, bro, 
your brother down here tripping, bro. I'm like, so I'm explaining to him what he just did. I'm like, the reason I got him is because the man just been trying to bust me with the candy bar. So bro telling him, he did this to my wife. He did this to my daughter. So I'm like, bro, so Billy G telling me, man, CB will just let him go. He telling Tug, Tug, come over here and talk to me, bro. Come to the window and talk to me. He like, CB will let him go. I'm like, what? Let him go? What the hell you mean he let him go? You don't see what he got in his head? He let that candy bar go, then I let him go. So he like, I'm telling you, bro. So he telling, bro, he like, if he let you go, do not do this. You better come straight over here to the window and talk to him. So he like, all right. He like, CB, that's my word, bro. That's my word. If the man try to bust you with the candy bar, I promise you, we gonna flatline him. He's not about to do it. Let him go. I just take his word, bro. I let dude go. I back up a little bit. He do what he said he was going to do. But he's looking at me the whole time while he walking back. He finally get over there to the door. The window like this, that long. So he's at the door. He looking back at me, though. Like, what's up, bro? What's up, big bro? Nah, bro, he tripping, bro. I know he took advantage of my daughter and whacked my wife. I know it was him. Daryl Dobson. I know it was him. So now he done got nice and calm. I mean, he's not calm, but he's not trying to bust me no more neither. So Billy G telling him, give me that candy bar. They got holes at the top of the door. About that big, it's a whole bunch of them at the top of the door. He telling Tug, give me that candy bar, bro. Give me that candy bar. So he like, uh, he like nah, because I know he going to try to do something to me. So Billy G tell me, he like, hey, CB, listen, don't do nothing to him. We're going to deal with this when, you, when we come off lockdown. He's about to give me that candy bar. Do not do nothing to him. So I'm like, all right, bro. So he's like, bro, give me the candy bar. So dude go to like putting it at the top of the door. Then he look at me again and he pull it down. He's like, no, nah, bro, he got to get back on his bed, bro. He got to sit back down on his bed because I don't trust that, bro. I don't trust him. He need to sit back down on his bed. Billy G tell me, see, Bill, get back on your bunk, folks. I'm about to take this candy bar from him. I know Billy G got a little sense. He said, don't do nothing to him when he give it to me. But, you know, he's not meaning that. He's just saying that he's using his mind to manipulate the matter also to get the weapon from Tug. I jump on my top bunk. Pew, so now I'm sitting up on the bunk like this. They talking. They going back and forth, back and forth for a long time. They sitting there talking, going back and forth. So... Billy G walks away from the door. I didn't even notice it was this late, bruh. I didn't even know it was this time. Because I know when I first got up and looked at my tablet, bruh, it had to be like two something in the morning. Next thing you know, you hear flaps, do, do, flaps and stuff like that. So, you know, it got to be an officer out here. They keep opening and closing these flaps. Next thing you know, the lieutenant open our door. The door open, the lieutenant come in. He got all the breakfast trays stacked up behind him. He been in here passing out breakfast. He comes in with the trays, put it on the top box, looks at me, I'm still sitting up, looks down at my roommate, he done came over here and sat down on the bed, done put the candy bar on his arm, he's sitting like that. He like, what y'all got going on in here? I'm like, what you mean? He like, y'all got something going on in here. Billy G standing behind him on the, on the front part of the red. So my thing is, I mean, I would like help for this situation, but you don't went and told the police or something, folks. Like, what the hell you just did, Billy? That's what I'm thinking. Like, you just went out there and said something to the police. So he like, no, nah, there's something going on in this room. What do y'all got going on? So I'm like, I ain't got nothing going on, bro. We ain't got nothing going on. He slammed the door and kept walking. So. I get back up when I'm getting ready to I'm getting ready to jump down and get back up. Dude jumps up with the candy bar. Now he holding it like this. And he's doing all this. Like he about to swing it, bro. So I backs up to the door. I'm like, bro, you tripping, bro. You real life tripping, bro. He still doing all this. Billy G come back to the door. He telling me, man, well, he came back to the door. He told my roommate, come here real quick, bro. Come here real quick. Dude went over there to the door. But I had to back up. So I'm backing up while he coming his way. So now we got to pass each other. 
while he's walking past me, he's doing it. He's holding the candle by like this. Like, just in case I try to do something to him while he's walking past me. Bro, I grabbed him again, bro. I grabbed his hand, how he had it like this. I grabbed his hand, I grabbed him by the body. Now I'm trying my best to twist it, twist it, get the thing out of his hand or whatever. I, bro, I could not get it, bro. I couldn't get it. The hoodie is in all covers on the website, but I'm gonna have them in person on me soon, this month. So I couldn't get it. I couldn't, couldn't get it out of his hand and stuff. So I guess the lieutenant done left. So Billy G, he go to scream, both of y'all stop, or both of y'all gonna get violated. Soon we come off lockdown. So I let dude go again. I'm like, man, Billy G, just whatever. So I hop back up there on my bunk. He back at the door talking to Billy G for a long time. I get pissed off, bro. I get pissed off. I'm thinking about it in my head. And I'm like, bro, there's no way. I go to looking at myself like, bro, you got on some boxers. You a grown ass man. And this other grown ass man is trying to bust you with the candy bar. I'm like, hey, listen, bro. One thing about it, this is how I feel about life. Whatever happens, it was meant to happen. If somebody busts me with the candy bar, it was meant to happen. Maybe it's a lesson I'm going to have to learn out of this or whatever. So I say, you know what, bro? I ain't, it is what it is. I ain't playing no more. So right when I'm thinking this, I hear somebody scream, tax squad on the floor, tax squad on the floor. The tax squad come running in. They run straight to where we at. So I see Billy G moving out the room, out the way. So now it's a lieutenant, what her name was. Damn, I can't think of her name. It's a lieutenant come to the door. She got the tax squad people right there behind her. She go to tell him soon she come up to the door. Hey man, throw that candy bar at the top of the door. Throw that candy bar at the top of the door. Again, how the hell did the tax squad get over here? So that means whatever Billy G said to the first lieutenant, you know, it seemed serious enough for them to go, you know, get these people to come down here. So she like, man, throw that, throw that candy bar out the door. We about to start spraying, we about to shoot y'all. Throw that candy bar out the door. So Tug go to crime, real life crime. LT, LT is just what they say, Lieutenant for short. He like, LT, LT, he keep looking back at me. He like, get me out the room with him, LT. Get me out the room with him. She like, man, that, throw that candy bar out the door or we about to start pepper spraying all y'all. So, so you got the task squad members who done went up the steps a little bit, and now they pointing, they pepper ball guns, they pepper spray through the top of the holes in the room. So they're like, man, you don't throw that can, you don't throw that candy bar out the door. We finna bust both of y'all. So they're like, LT, I'ma give you the candy bar, but get me out the room with dude. Get me out the room with dude because I know he trying to kill me. So she know me because I had a job working in the intake area. So the lieutenant tell me. Hey, Bill, lay down on your stomach. What? I'm sitting straight up. Lay down on my stomach. What the hell I look like? So I'm like, what the hell? No. So now I'm arguing, going back and forth with the LT. The LT say, Bill, lay down on your stomach so I can get the candy bar from dude. And then I'm about to get y'all out of this room. She said, I promise you, Bill, I promise you. If that dude even look like he's about to walk away from this door, we about to shoot so much pepper spray at him through this room, through these holes in the door. We about to shoot so much pepper spray at this man. So I'm like, all right, bro. I do it because I'm like, well, if he tried anyway, I'm going to have enough time to jump up. So it is what it is. I roll over on my stomach. She say, Bill, put your hands behind your back. I put my hands behind my back, but I'm looking at him the whole time like this. So he's at the door. Bro, do you know, next thing I heard was, clink, 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 clink. The man dropped the candy bar out the top of the door, trying to give it to the lieutenant. Here's the thing. Most of the doors work from the officer booth popping it. My door was one of the few that didn't work like that. You had to use the key. It was the tax squad and the lieutenant right here at this door. The rest of the people, I mean, the regular officer, she was in the booth. She was not right here. So when I heard that knife go to dropping, bro, 
Boy, I jumped off that bed so fast, charged, buddy. So the lieutenant go to scream, Bill, you better not hit him. You better not hit him. Man, by the time she said it the second time, I was already taking flight on his ass. Boy, I was on his ass like white on rice. I promise you, bro. I was beating his ass so bad he was in the corner right here. So he went to fall. So when he went to falling in the corner, that's when they started pepper spraying. They couldn't get the door open. The Terry on plug, appreciate you for that super chat. Family, appreciate you for supporting my channel. Our channel. The Feezy family channel. So she go to busting the pepper spray, paint balls, all kind of stuff through the door. So now I'm going back like this, but I can't see nothing. They can't get the door open. They need the officer to get in here. They calling for the officer. I guess she coming, but she's just not coming fast enough. I'm not satisfied with this ass whooping I just gave him. Bro, I run over here. I can't barely see nothing. I'm like this the whole time. I can't barely see. I get over here. I see my fan. I pick the fan up. I go to wrapping the cord around my arm. I walk back over here to a dude that he's still on the ground. Now he like, ah, like he can't see. Bro, I start hitting him in the face with the fan. I swear to God. Boom, boom, boom. I know for a fact I hit this man in the face with this fan probably about seven, eight times. Next thing you know, the door snatched open. I already can't see. So I'm sitting here like this at the corner of the door. The door is like right here. Some of my arm is on the door. He's down in the corner. I'm hitting them all in the face with the fan. The door finally opened. I feel more pepper spray all in my face. I close my eyes. They grabbed me. Took me for that ride. Next thing you know, I'm laid out on the ground. Shoulder feel like it's about broke. So we get up there to medical. The lieutenant is explaining to the warden what happened. So she's like, Bill actually was complying. I told him to get on the bed. I told him to lay down, put his hands behind his back. He did everything I told him. She said, but you know, once dude dropped the candy bar, he did go to beating his ass. But you know, who wouldn't have done that? So the warden say, yeah. So the warden asked me, what's wrong with him? What, what was the issue? You ever had issues with him? I said, never had issues with this man today in my life. He like, well, what's wrong with him? I'm like, brother, be honest, I don't know. He might be on that stuff. I don't know what's wrong with him. The warden let me go back to the dorm. He let medical see me. They put something on me trying to get me right so the pepper spray won't be so hot. It had just started raining. Tima J, appreciate you for that super chat. Sweetheart supporting the channel. So they tell me to stand outside in the rain for a while. It seemed like it's burning. It is not making it no better, but that cool rain do kind of feel good, but it's still burning. So after a while, they let me go back to the dorm. They take dude to wherever he went. I go back in the dorm. Billy G and another dude was like cleaning up the room. They had them two cleaning up, trying to get the, uh, the pepper spray stuff, you know, out the room and stuff. So they wiping the walls down, wiping the toilet down. So I go back in, I go back in there, so I'm talking to them. And uh, I'm telling them what happened, what all happened, whatever the case. Billy G say, yeah, fam, you handled your business, but the only thing I don't like, I just don't like how, how that man had you stripped down in your boxes. I don't like that. I'm like, what you mean had me stripped down in my boxes? Nobody had me stripped down in my damn boxes. I had on my boxes. That's all I had on. He talking about some, oh, so he ain't pull out the candy bar on you and make you strip out all your clothes? What? I'm like, bro, what is you talking about, folks? What is you talking about? So he like, yeah, you know, man, sometimes that's just what it be seeming like, whatever. I go to getting some vibes from Billy G like, bro, what, the, what, what, what is you talking about? Is you trying to set me up some type of way? Like, what do you got going on? Appreciate that $10 super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel, family. Shalom. I'm like, damn, bro, you must be tripping or something. Like, what, what, what's really going on? Now, I got to let y'all know this. I'm not going to say the exact names uh, of these positions because I'm just not supposed to be saying it. The dude, Billy G, I told you he got all to say so. Okay, that's on a security basis. Dial more. Appreciate your family for that $10 super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel. The Terry on plug, thank you. Life with micro bullies, thank you. I appreciate y'all for supporting the channel. So that's on the security side of things. But there is another person that got the last final, not really, security got it. But it's one more person that, 
you know, he's like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm out there on the walk one day. The walk is just the sidewalk of the prison. I'm walking around. I think I was going to my job, detail, whatever. I'm coming back one day. I end up bumping into bro. He like, hey, CB, let me holler at you. He got about 10 of the guys with him. I'm like, what's up? He like, folks, you need to go on the door. I'm like, go on the door for what? He said, because you just went out bad in that situation. I'm like, how did I go out bad? What are you talking about? He like, man, they talking about you let somebody strip you and uh, you ain't even fight dude back. I'm like, bro, who said that? Who said that? So he like, man, Billy G, such and such, such and such. He named about five guys that was in the dorm, bro. And all these supposed to be my guys. Chocolate Princess, thank you for that super chat, sweetheart. Thank you for supporting the channel. All these is my guys. So I'm like, what? They told you that? So he like, yeah, bro. And, and I don't like none of my bros going out bad. So you got to go on the door, bro, at least for 60 days, bro. You know, let the air clear up and then you come back. So I'm like, bro, all due respect for you. I got plenty much love and respect for you. I never disrespect you, brother. But I'm not going nowhere because that's a lie. That ain't never happened. That ain't never happened, brother. Appreciate that, uh, Chia Weird, that super chat. Thank you, brother. Uh, if, you not, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, bro. And then, you know, you can, you can get more and more of these stories. And tap that like button for your boy, too. So I'm like, bro, that ain't never happened. It's some Muslims coming, that walking down this way, actually directly next door to me, on one side of me, Miss Hershey Chocolate, favorite YouTuber show. Thank you for that super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel. You got two Muslims in the room on the left side of me. You got two Crips on the other side of me. I told y'all in, in other videos in prison how much you can hear through the vents. So I see them coming down the wall. After I told bro, I'm not going to the door. He's like, what you mean, bro? What you mean? So the other guys come walking around. I know they about to jump. Probably beat my ass because I'm bucking on the big man. So I'm like, hold on, bro. Hold on. Let me. So I'm like, hey, bro, come here. Come here. Come here. It's two Muslims, both of the roommates, and one of the Crip dudes was out there on the walk. I called him over there to me. I'm like, hey, let me ask you a question, bro, about that situation that just happened with me and Tug. So he like, they all like, oh, hell no, hell no, we ain't getting into that, we ain't getting into that. So the big dude was like, hey, no, nah, listen, look, though. He said, bro, we just want to ask you one question. He said, I promise you, bro, your name not going to be brought up in this. Ain't nobody finna get you involved in nothing. I promise you, ain't nobody getting you involved in nothing. I just want him to ask you whatever he want to ask you. I just, just want to try to verify something. So they're like, all right, what's up, bro? I said, all I want to ask you is this. That situation that happened. So they're like, we don't know what happened. I'm like, okay, well, whatever happened. How did it end? Tell me what was the ending. How did you, like, from what you could hear through the vent, like, what did you hear? The first dude said, well, it sounded like two gorillas was in that fight, tearing that room up. And then the other one was like, yeah, lieutenant, them came in there, pepper spray, hell out of them. They snatched the door open, slammed Bill out. And another dude was like, yeah, they was in there hitting, but that, it was too loud. But I was hearing it all on my vents. So I'm like, all right, bro, appreciate it. So they all walk off. So I look at dude, he like, damn, ain't no way. He said, man, they told me it wasn't no fight. They told me you was in there talking about uh, help, go get me some help, go get the officer. I said, man, they got me. Up, bro. So he like, all right, well, you cool, bro. You ain't got to leave and go get on no dope. He said, but when I go back to the dorm, I'm about to call y'all. We about to get on the conference call. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go back in the dorm. Bro, I'm mad as hell. The whole time I'm standing outside the gate, I'm really sitting here thinking about going swinging on Billy G, but it be so much he say, she say, I want to verify from you, did you really say this before I go to reacting like you said this? And then another thing I got to keep in mind, Billy G got all the money and he got some pool. So I can't just go in here going crazy on Billy G because all these nut riders in the dorm, they'd be ready to kill my ass just because he gonna get them some food or he gonna get them something to smoke. So I gotta be smart about the whole situation. I go back in the dorm, I go straight to Billy G room. He like, yo, I pulled it over. I'm like, hey folks, he like, what's up? I'm like, man, what the hell bro talking about? He like, what? I'm like, man, the man told me you said it wasn't no fight. I ain't never fight Tug, and Tug stripped me down naked. Like, what's up with that, G? He like, man, I ain't say that. I said, the same thing I said to you, like, it, it, it appears like, it seems like this, this, and that. So I leave, I go to the other dude room that buddy told me he said. 
So I'm like, damn, they really trying to assassinate my character right now. Now they trying to have me really looking like Cornball Jamal. So I go to his room. I'm like, hey, bro. He like, yeah. I'm like, bro, what, 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 bro? I'm talking about y'all said I just so I run it down to him. He like, man, man, bro. At the end of the day, bro, ain't no way that man stripped you. So when he said that, I'm like, bro, why do y'all keep saying that? Why do y'all keep saying that, bro? What is you talking about? When, when did that happen, bro? He like, bro. So how the hell you fighting the man and nothing but your boxer? I'm like, it's a thousand degrees outside. It's hot as hell. I woke up in my box. What you think I'm supposed to get up? He pulling out a candy bar on me. I'm supposed to say, well, let me put on some shorts real quick. Ain't nobody think about nothing like that. So he like, well, at the end of the day, I ain't say that no way. I just pretty much said that's what it seemed like. So now ain't nobody say that. Now they saying that's what we thought happened. That's what it seemed like happened. But ain't nobody straight up saying that. I'm like, all right, whatever. I pull up on all of them throughout the day. I didn't have a phone at this time. I pull up on all of them throughout the day. Hey, bro ain't called y'all. Bro ain't called y'all. No, he ain't called. Well, call him. Let's see. Oh, he ain't answering the phone. They giving me all kind of excuses. Oh, no, he ain't answering the phone. This, this, and that. He ain't picking up. I'm like, all right, whatever. So now I'm just like, bro, it's whatever. It is what it is. Y'all got me. Y'all trying to have me look real flaky. I'm talking to a crip dude one night. I rock with him like this. He like, hey, Bill. He asked me if I wanted to smoke a Chris Brown CD. I say, yeah, we go in the room. We smoking a Chris Brown CD. He said, hey, look, bro, I'm going to tell you something, but I don't want you to ever repeat this and say it came from me. I'm like, what's up? He said, from my understanding, it's uh, one of your brothers named, uh, damn, I can't think of that little raccoon-looking dude name. Uh, he said, one of your brothers, they say, and this came from somebody, I ain't going to repeat who it came from, but they say that whole situation was a setup. Somebody actually paid Tug to try to bust you, but I guess it just didn't go the right way. So now they want you out the dorm. So now they about to, they say they about to come up with something or whatever the case is to get you put on the door. They're like, bro, but don't repeat that. Do not tell nobody it came from me. So I'm like, all right, cool. I know this had to come from one of my guys. Y'all is in major violation for even talking to another group, a crip, telling him whether y'all was trying it or not. Y'all ain't supposed to be telling him that. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I'm on point now. Now I'm just on point. A couple days go by, I don't have no issues. Don't nobody say nothing crazy to me or nothing. Billy G had a female officer that was bringing him in the pack. Yeah, trying to, for, trying to make me catch out, yeah. Billy G had an officer that was giving him the pack. You know, he was smashing her, all that type stuff. So one day, me and another dude named, uh, me and another one of my guys named Prince, we standing right there by the, by the, by the uh, little rail that takes you downstairs talking. Billy G at the flap talking to the girl. Billy G goes out, she let him out, he go into the booth, he goes into the officer booth. So I say, I'm just really, to be honest, I'm really fake kicking it with them. Kind of the, you know, see if they're gonna slip up or I'm gonna be able to get some insight on something. I'm really not feeling none of them no more right now. I'm not feeling them right now. Cause I'm already hearing y'all trying to set me up. So I look over there, I say to Prince, I'm like, but that, Bill, that boy Billy G, that boy got it going on. But that boy Billy G, he uh, I need to, I need to get like him one day. Boy, I need to get my money right and start having me an officer coming through this, this, and it. I make a comment like that. I say about two days later, Billy G transferred. The same night he transferred, Prince and like three other guys come in my room. Hey, CB, you got to pack it up and go on the door, bro. I'm like, go on the door for what? Miss Hershey Chocolate. Appreciate that. Super chat. Yeah, I'm going to save it. I'm going uh, to save it. So I'm like, go on the door for what? So they like, bro, that situation that happened with Tug, that was number one. And then number two, they say you keep on backbiting. And that, I'm like, backbiting? How the hell am I backbiting? Well, who am I backbiting on? So they say, Billy G. I say, Billy G ain't even here no more. 
That man had a whole nother prison. How the hell am I backbiting on Billy G? What the hell I did? What, what the hell I did? So they're like, oh, no. I'm like, man, one of y'all need to let me use your phone so I can call him. So I can call him and see what's going on. Now, the reason I say what did I do is because I'm not bigger than that business, number one. I'm human just like everybody else human. So if I'm a part of a group and I know the rules, if you mess up, you got to go on the dope. Melvin Ball, we appreciate that super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel, family. I know if you mess up, you got to go on the dope. I done put plenty of people on the dope myself. So I say, what did I do? I'm not going to say, oh, I ain't going nowhere without asking what did I do. Maybe I'm in violation somewhere. I don't know. Nick Hooks, appreciate that. Super chat, thank you for supporting the channel, family. If I did something wrong, bro, I'm a grown man. I'm going to take my lead. It is what it is. So one of them end up letting me use their phone. I call a dude that's at the camp that I talked to on the walk that time. I'm like, hey, bro, these guys done pulled up on me talking about I need to get on the door. I'm like, I thought I talked to you. You said everything was Gucci. Like, what's really going on? So he was like, yeah, bro, but I talked to a few of them guys, bro, and you know they still saying that it went like this. So I told them to put you on the door because I don't want none of my bros going out back. So I'm like, all right, say less. I get off the phone with him. Poor Rogers 38, appreciate that super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel, family. So I'm like, all right, say less. Now I see what's going on here. All y'all playing games. You the big man. You run everything. You tell me to my face one day, you good. You ain't got to go nowhere. Then about a week done went by, you still running around sneaking, telling these people, yeah, he got to go on the door. Then when I call you, you still, oh, man, they say, so now, bro, I prayed. I said a prayer to the Most High. I asked him to be with me, and I kept thinking. I said, well, Bill, you only got five years left, four and a half, five years left to do in prison. Some of these guys is never getting out. If they kill you, it's not going to hurt them. They don't give a damn. I use that to try to convince myself to just leave. Even with knowing that, bro, I'm a grown man, bro. I got certain principles and morals that I stand on. If I did something wrong, I would leave with no problem. I didn't do nothing wrong, folks. I prayed. I was praying all that day. What it means to get on the door, for the people in the chat that don't know, that basically means we're all in jail, we're all in prison, and I'm getting sick and tired of you being in this dorm. So I said, hey, man, get on the door. That basically means you're going to pack up all your property and you're going to go to the door and you're going to tell the officer, hey, I can't be in this dorm no more. I fear for my life or whatever you tell her. And she's going to let you out the dorm and you're going to go to the hole. It's just basically putting somebody out the dorm. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. So the guy who told me there's no way, there's no way that you know, you was in your boxes. The same guy who told me that, he's keep talking to me. Now, this was the biggest issue with him. While me and him sitting here talking, going back and forth, like two other my guys then came in the dorm, in the room. So now it's like four of us in there. This man say, man, that man had a candy bar out on you, trying to bust you with the candy bar. Why you ain't charged that? Why you ain't run up on him and beat his ass then? I'm like, bro, the man got this sharp ass thing in his hand. What do you mean why I didn't charge him? What if I would have ran up on him trying to swing and he'd have hit me and killed me? Then what? Before I tell you what he said, this is what I noticed. This is how I knew what the crip dude to told me about it's a setup. It got to be true somewhere because now your issue is why I didn't charge him when, I, when he had the candy bar. That just wasn't your issue a couple days ago. Your issue a couple days ago was, how am I in my boxers? Y'all thought he stripped me down. So now that's not the issue no more. Now the issue is, why didn't I charge him when he had the candy bar? What the hell is really going on here? So I'm like, bro, the man had the candy bar. What if I ran up on him and swung on the man would have killed me? Then what I was supposed to do? I used my mind to manipulate the matter. I met the situation and I'm here still. I swear to God, this man looked me in my eyes and said, at least if he would have killed you, we would have been able to call your mama and say, 
Your son died with honor. Your son ain't go out bad. Your son ain't make the business look like a... Your son stood up with principles. At least we would have been able to tell your mama that. What? Are you serious? If he would have killed me, at least I would have been able to... At least y'all would have been able to call my mama and say, your son died with honor? And this is an elder that's saying this. This man 50-something years old. You're an elder. That's why the youth is so discombobulated now because the elders is stupid. Poor Rogers this 38. Appreciate that super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel, family. So, I'm like, bro, what do you mean? I'm like, there's no way in hell that is, is, is about to be a good enough explanation for me. Ain't no way, man. What? What is you talking about? That don't even sound right. This guy also has a life sentence. He's never getting out of prison. He done went to Went for a retrial. He done went and tried to put motions, whatever, back in the court. All of it got denied. So he's he know he ain't going nowhere now. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like, whatever, bro. I say about another two days go by. The same dude I was just arguing with. And this was so crazy. I be looking at myself. I be feeling so stupid, bro, for having so much loyalty towards these folks. And I knew they didn't give a damn, bro. About two days later, the same dude who just told me at least you would have died with honor, we're standing at the shower, doing shower security for him. Shower security means there's somebody inside the shower, Miss Hershey Chocolate, what the fizzy? Thank you for supporting the channel, sweetheart. That means there's somebody inside the shower taking a shower. There's other people standing, like this is the inside of the shower. Me and Prince standing outside the shower, both got our candy bars. We're standing here to make sure don't nobody come jump in the shower and try to do nothing to unk while he in here. So we're standing outside the shower. We're talking about me. The dude in the shower says, hey, CBL, bro, I'm tired of getting calls. I'm tired of people calling my phone, whatever. We don't let this go on long enough. Hey, listen, bro, go on, get on the door, bro. I ain't gonna keep telling you that. I'm like, get on the door for what? He said, because you're in violation. I say, I'm in violation of what? He said, you went out bad, you been backbiting, and, bro, we just don't want that in here. I'm like, y'all keep saying backbiting. Who the hell did I backbite? How did I backbite? Dude, Prince looked straight in my face and said, well, fam, you remember when me and you were standing over there by the rail, and then you said... Billy G, uh, the girl only like him because he got money and he really be paying for the kitty cat and he really lame and this and that. What? I'm like, bro, I didn't say nothing like that, Prince. He go, I am not supposed to be here. I'm telling you, poor Rogers is 38. That's how I felt. I'm not supposed to be here. So I'm like, bro, you going to take my word? And flip everything I said, knowing damn well I didn't say that. I really wanted to fall off in Prince's mouth. But like I say, I'm extremely paranoid now. Now I'm feeling like these guys really is trying to set me up. So you took me saying, hey, yeah, I need to get like, bro, I need to get my money up and get like, bro. You took it from that to me saying he be paying them girls and he lame and he this and that. When did I ever say any of that, bro? So I'm arguing with bro. So the dude in the shower, I said, bro, if anything, you in violation. He said, how? I said, because every time you talk about the business, you loud, bro. Everybody hear you. You talk to different groups of people about our business, so you in violation. He said, the only thing I'm in violation is, is not putting your bald head ass on the door. I was supposed to been put you on the door. So I'm, I ain't saying that. I'm like, all right, bro. So he's like, hey, CB, this is my last time telling you, bro. I'm not telling you no more. Go get on the door, bro. I say, all right. I walk away from the shower. When I walk away from the shower, Prince said, hey, see, Bill? I look over at him, I'm like, what's up? He said, you finna get on the door? I said, hell yeah. He said, all right. I went in my room, I had another candy bar under the mat, pulled it from under my mat. My bunk mate at that time was a white guy, rock solid, rock with him like this. I told him straight up, I said, hey, listen, bro. You know, I, I prayed and prayed and prayed about it that 
you know, you're not down with them. You ain't got nothing to do with them. I felt like he didn't, though, because like I said, he was solid with me. I said, bro, but I'm about to tell you what's going on. They just told me I got to get on the door again. I said, bro, I'm not going nowhere. I'm not getting on no door. Hopefully, it don't be no issue that trans, you know, turns into some violence. But if it do, bro, it is what it is. I just want to let you know I rock with you, bro. You been solid. And, you know, just stay out of this, bro. So he's like, man, hell no, man. They ain't about to do it. I'm like, bro, I'm just letting you know. So I leave out the room. I go stand outside the door and stuff. You know what I'm saying? In the day room area by where the window is. Dude come out the shower. He come walking around the shower. The other dude, Prince, still with him. So he like, oh, you ain't going nowhere, huh? You bust? All right. <laughs> He busts out laughing. He go in his room. Prince come down there. He like, say, bro, as soon as he did that, I turned this way. I'm clutching. I got the candy bar on me. You know, bro, I don't know what you're doing, bro. Watch out. Watch out. You know what I'm saying? He like, bro, nah, I'm trying to talk to you. I'm like, bro, watch out. Stop playing with me, Prince. Stop playing with me, Prince. So he tried to flip it on me. Talking about, oh, you trying to bear arms on the brother. I'm like, nah, but you ain't finna play with me neither. Watch out, bro. Watch out, bro. So... Prince end up walking away. So my roommate and like another guy come up that was cool with me and they asked me like, bro, what the hell happened? So I'm telling them this, they acting totally appalled as if they ever, never heard nothing about this before. So some of the other guys pulling up like, what? When they told you to go on the door? We thought that been over with, you know what I'm saying? So later on that day, I'm still in the dorm, bro. I promise you, I'm still in the dorm, I ain't go nowhere. I'm still in the dorm, the dude who was in the shower told me to come here. I tell him straight up, bro, I'm not going to your room, bro. I've been on the big flow all day. I'm like, bro, I'm not coming to your room, bro. I'm not coming to your room. I'm not stupid. So he ends up coming out there talking to me. He says to me, yeah, the dude who down the walk that really run the camp right now, he don't give a damn nothing about that, bro. He ain't studying that. I'm going to tell you what the issue is. It's Billy G. He had another prison still calling, talking about y'all need to get on the dope. And he was like, bro, I'm going to just be straight up with you. You know, you know some of us owe him a lot of money. So we just trying to, you feel me? If he like, I'm like, bro, so you gonna sit here and tell me something that you took an oath for, something you put your life on the line for, something you promised to love your brothers and ride with your brothers. You finna let some money that you owe somebody. You riding his nuts so hard, you owe him some money. And you finna let him trick you into doing something to one of your righteous brothers? That's what you about to do? So he like, bro, I was just coming to tell you, man, F buddy, bro. I've been thinking about it. We ain't rocking with him. We ain't listening to dude. He ain't even at this prison no more. You ain't got to, you feel me? You straight. I'm like, I know I'm straight. He like, no, bro. Don't say it like that. This, I totally got out of my calm character, bro. I was too gone. I couldn't believe these guys was really. So I asked him. I'm like, so, bro, what was it all about? Clearly, y'all tried to set me up in this prison. Possibly get my life taken away if Tug would have bust me in the neck with the candy bar while I was asleep. This man could have killed me and took my life. I could have never made it home and seen my family. So what was it really all about? I didn't have a phone at that time. I didn't really have no money at that time. I had a couple dollars. I was doing a little something. I was just up and down with it. What was y'all hating on me about? Why did y'all want me out the way so bad? Bro, I don't know what they had going on. I'm going to tell you straight up what it was. Billy G is the type of person he want to build himself up and make himself look like the top dog and he want everybody to ride his nuts that's what he like he like nut holders he like sack riders that's what he like me and the other dude named cheese i think was the only two in the dorm that was not on his nuts we didn't give a damn about no phones we didn't care how much money you had we didn't care how much food you had i'm not gonna come around you and kick i'm not gonna need you for nothing i'm not gonna ask you for nothing talk heavy Appreciate that family. It's supposed to be all as one, but everyone doesn't stick to the code. It be your own people sometimes. Valuable mess. Yeah, most definitely, brother. That's how it be. It be your own people, brother. Appreciate you for supporting the channel too, family. All is one. That's how it's supposed to be. So, uh, where I left off at? Okay, so yeah, so the dude, the dude, the older dude that tried to put me on the door, so he tell me that, so I'm like, all right, whatever. So, I'm about to tell you how the tables turn. Now I'm in that dorm for another three months. Over one can in the chat. Let's get those likes up. Yeah, we got a thousand people in here. Let's, let's, let's get them likes up. If you ain't tap the like button, tap the like button for your boy. Let's get them likes up. I appreciate y'all. So I'm about to tell you how the tables turn. I told y'all I had a job up there in the ID area. They don't want their good orderlies in these bad dorms because uh, 
you know, we keep getting locked down and they got orderlies that work good jobs and they want to have access to them all the time. So they come one day, we got locked down again, bro. While we're on lockdown, they come and uh, tell me, pack my stuff up. I'm going to the faith-based dorm. Faith-based faith -based dorm is supposed to be the best dorm on the compound. No violence, no none of that. But it's also supposed to be no contraband. So if you got contraband for sale and go to the faith-based dorm, you will make a killing. Because it ain't that many people in a faith-based dorm that got nothing going on. So I pack up, man, I start packing my property up so fast. I'm like, hell yeah, get me away from me crazy ass, dude. So I pack up. When I'm leaving out, I hear old school from upstairs that was just uh, trying to put me on the door, calling my name. So I go up there, I'm like, what's up? It's applications you got to fill out to get to the faith-based dorm. I didn't have to fill one out because I was already an administrative orderly. The man slides something under the door. Shh. I look down, it's a sheet of paper. I pick up the paper, I look at it, it's a faith-based application. So you in here playing gangster, acting so tough, this, this, and that, trying to put people on the door, and you been filled out a damn faith-based application. You been trying to get out this damn dorm. <laughs> so he slides under the door. He say, man, get that to a counselor, bro. Get that to a counselor. Get me the hell out this dorm, bro. Man, get me out this dorm, bro. I'm like, all right, say that. I take the application, I walk out the door. Soon as I know I'm out the door enough where he can't see me, Ball that guy up, but stop. I'm not about to help you do nothing. Balled him up, thought I was LeBron James. Threw it away. This is how the tables turn. I'm going to give that probably about another four months. Another four months, I got promoted in what I was. First, I was somebody's assistant, and then I got promoted to that guy. I had to say so at the prison. And I had started getting money. I had the news. I had everything. Everybody wanted to be with C Bill, wanted to be around C Bill, needed something for C Bill. These same guys that was just in this dorm trying to put me on the door, that was trying to set me up, had to listen to me. It got to a point they had to listen to me. They had to, what I said, the way it was going to go, that's what they had to do. Now, you know, it's always going to be some renegades that buck, but for the most part, they had to listen to me. When the big people call, who run the whole state, when they call there, guess who they had? Put C. Bill on the phone. That's how the tables turned, bro. They had to listen to me. You know how many times I thought about having somebody go down there and do something to them? How easy I could have did it? All I would have had to do was tell some, hey, Go down there, bust them, put them on the door. I could have did it easy. I never did it, bro. I never did it. I stayed humble. You know, I ain't want to, you know, I, ain't, I don't do stuff like that. I stayed humble. But, bro, they had to listen to me. I remember one night, dude, blowing my phone up. The dude, Prince, that lied on me to my face. Blowing my phone up. Talking about, gee, gee, man, it's finna go down, G. It's a crazy situation. What you want us to do, G? How you want us to handle this situation, G? What you want us to do? Swear to God. And I, after I told him, after I told him how to deal with the situation like a real boss would deal with a situation, I sat back and I thought about it, bro. And I said, damn. Look at the irony in that. Y'all was just trying to do me harm. And now you calling me talk about big bro, what we need to do, big bro. I, I'm, you older than me. How the hell I'm big bro? You older than me. So that just goes to show, bro. I feel like I ain't gonna lie to you. I just feel like I'm blessed, bro. I done made it through so many situations, and I remain humble. I, you know, I remain grateful to the Most High, and I just feel like, you know, I know this might sound kind of uh, cliche. But like when you do something to one of God's children, but I really feel like you're going to get dealt with on a higher level. Like you're going you gonna to feel it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't got to do nothing to you. So that's just what I think, bro. And uh, that's why I say this is the scariest thing that ever happened to me because that man could have took my life while I was sleeping at prison. Remember, people, every game in life has a cheat code. There is no code, only death by destruction. Poor Righteousness 38, appreciate you for that super chat. Thank you for supporting to the channel, family. So I just wanted to tell y'all that, bro. And, bro, so, so this is the lesson for y'all, bro. You got people 
that'll be around you every day. I don't care if you're in prison or if you're on the streets. You got people that'll be in your face every day that you laugh with, that you kick it with, that you smoke with, that you eat food with, that if there's a situation, you and this man to get together and go defend yourself against each other. These same people is the people that'll cross you out about some money. That set you up about some money, have somebody kill you. Might not even be about no money. It might be that this guy is hating on you for whatever reason and I owe him some money. I feel like I'm in debt to him that whatever he tell me to do, I'll go do it. But I'm the same person you kicking it with every day. How the hell can you just do something to me and I kick it with you every day? What type of morals do you stand on, folks? Because I don't give a... Listen, bro. They owe that man $500 a piece, like four of them. If I owe you $5,000 and you tell me, hey, man, we're going to kill that debt, I need you to... Uh, cross dude out. When I write this paperwork up, I need you to agree with me. Put him on the dope. We're going to lie and say this and that happened. We're going to make him look bad for whatever reason. I feel like hating on him. And then uh, that debt going to be clear. I swear to God I won't do it. That 5000 No, sir. I'm not doing that because I stand on morals. What I'm going to do is be a grown man and grind and pay you your money back. I'm going to pay you your money but I'm not about to cross out no brother, no good, righteous brother just because you want it done. So, bro, the people y'all run with, y'all kick it with, and I stress this to the younger people, bro, because it seems like when people say, dang, when they scream that stupid word, people feel like that's, that, that, that equates with loyalty or that these people going to be down with you. But these same people have had your life taken away about anything. They, these same people will cross you out, brother. So I just wanted to let y'all know that I'm about to skate off of here. It's your boy, Bill. I appreciate everybody coming out, supporting me. Miss Hershey Chocolate, appreciate the message for the year. Love from Chicago. Oh, that's love to the shot Town. I appreciate big shout out to all my moderators that was on here on point, kicking them foolish messages off of here. I appreciate everybody who supported to this live. Man, if y'all have not hit the like button on your way out, can you please tap that like button for your boy? It's your boy Bill, I'm gone. I'm going to just uh, lead this up for a second for if you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button for your boy real quick. It's your boy Bill. I'm gone. I love y'all, man. Boy, I'm thirsty as hell, boy. I, don't even, I can't even grab a cup. Got me sweating. I feel like I'm on a damn pool pit, like a preacher preaching or something. <laughs> Appreciate them likes. I'm gone. Uh, Facebook, Bill Feasy. It'll be two pages. Pop up, follow both of them. I'm trying to get on a partner program and Instagram, Bill underscore Feasy. I'm out of here.